Dalvin Cook is officially a New York Jet. He spoke to the media for the first time as a Jet earlier today, and he said a lot about his role with the team, the impact Aaron Rodgers had on signing with the Jets. So in today's video, we're going to break down his comments and talk about the Dalvin Cook impact on the Jets going forward. It's the Jake Asman Show. So let's hit it. Dalvin Cook intro and get it started. Damn, does it feel good to have a Super Bowl winning quarterback? Another freaking game. Y'all fought your asses off. That was awesome. Dalvin Cook is a freaking check, baby. Let's go. The Miami Dolphins fans are crying. What an amazing signing, dude. I'm so hyped. Let's right. go, Jake. Let's right. go. Well, we're going to shut them all up this year. Let's go, baby. I could do backflips right now if I, if I was able to. What a time to be a Jet fan. This is just amazing. Jake! Hey! 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 Jake! Jake! Wow! Hit it! We have Garrett Wilson. Let's freaking go. We have Brees Hall. We are ready to win. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super chat, baby. Cut the line. We have an elite defense. You're welcome on the Jet Bandwagon. Now, let's talk about the New York Jets. This is the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go welcome in everybody my name is jake asman and this is the jake asman show show number two on the day as we continue to talk all things new york jets dalvin cook spoke earlier today so we will break down what he had to say before we do that though if you missed it i made the announcement earlier i am no longer with espn houston i am now a full-time jet youtuber full-time content creator i'm going to do jets i'm going to do some more New York sports as well, but I am focused on the YouTube channel, making this my full-time job. Full disclosure, it's already been a full-time job. It has just been uh, what I've done in addition to afternoon radio in Houston. But unfortunately, without getting into the whole story here, two, two-thirds of the show that I was hosting, they both left within a week of each other. I was the last guy left, and well, it just didn't work out. Uh, that's radio. So thankfully, I have this YouTube channel to fall back on. And as you guys have been following, I've been getting regular shifts on ESPN New York, so that's where my attention is at. Tomorrow, I will be hosting the morning show. I'll be filling in for Rick DiPietro and Dave Rothenberg. It'll be Dan Grassa and I co-hosting the show from 6A to 10A Eastern. So hopefully you guys could tune in on your way to work, on your way to school. Looking forward to talking New York sports tomorrow from 6A to 10A in morning drive. So no longer with ESPN Houston. So now it's all about the Jets, New York sports, and much more great content coming your way on this channel. Bunch of you have reached out and I really appreciate all the support. Uh, if you want to help support me in this new venture, here's the best way to do it. One support my sponsors. They support me. And if you support them, that allows the channel to continue to grow and sign up for my Patreon, because now you're going to get even more bonus content. If you sign up, it costs just five bucks a month. So it's like one super chat every month, patreon.com slash Jake Asman show there. You get bonus shows every month, not available to the YouTube audience. You also gain access to our discord, which provides up to date jets, news and analysis 24 seven jets, uh, chitter chatter jets, memes, NFL talk, you name it. We got our hard knocks watch party that comes with a Patreon membership every Tuesday night. We'll be doing that. So if you want to support me, as I go full-time content creator for the foreseeable future, best way to do that is patreon.com slash Jake Asman Show, in addition to just watching the YouTube show, as you guys do, and spreading the word. So big thanks to everyone for your support because I'm able to. Luckily, most people, they, they lose a job in radio. They don't have a full-time job they can fall back into. Thankfully, I do, so I'm in a great spot, and I really appreciate everyone for taking the time to support the show. With that being said, let's talk about Dalvin Cook. I think there's a lot of mystery with Dalvin Cook, right? There was a lot of, well, Dalvin Cook is just using the Jets because he really wants to go to Miami. There's the, well, Dalvin Cook, he's not going to be able to practice. His shoulder injury is a lot worse. Oh, Dalvin Cook's going to be suspended. A lot of this just feels like it was thrown out there, and it's not based on anything. 
So Dalvin Cook spoke today, and rather than break it up into clips, I thought, let's edit down the best three minutes from Dalvin Cook's press conference earlier today. We'll play what he said. You'll hear the questions. You'll hear the answers. And then I'll come back on and give you my take on how Dalvin Cook impacts the Jets, their offense, and everything else. So here's Dalvin Cook from earlier today, the best three minutes from Cook at the podium. Uh, what made this a tragic situation for you? Uh, I think collectively, you know, when I came on my visit, I think I pretty much seen everything I needed to see. Uh, you know, it was good vibe with the coaches, the players, you know, everybody around the building. And, you know, obviously when you dig deep and look into the roster, I think all the pieces are put together. I think I can come help these guys. And you look at the running back room with MC, Brees, Bam, and all those guys with me just adding to it, I think it could be something special. It seemed like a college bit because, you know, they had the fans chanting your name <laughs> and stuff like that too. So how cool was that just to have that fans like into it? That was cool, man. You know, I've been in Minnesota for my whole career, and just to, you know, come out here and get a different vibe for the fans, you know, it, it was it was good, man. Just to just to hear them screaming my name, and you know, just to see how excited they was. How big a part of it was the chance to play with Aaron Rodgers? Being on the other side of that for the last six years, you know, I couldn't be on the other side no more. So it was just like being, a, I got the chance to go join them and you know, you know, help them win, win again. You know, that was that was a big thing to come. Come over here. If he isn't, if he isn't here. Is it likely, Dalvin, that you would have signed with somebody else? Either? I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that one for you. I'm just glad he is here. <laughs> now, what do you, what do you view as your role with this? I mean, you're coming to a group that already has Brees Hall and obviously showed a lot last year. Like, how, what do you view as your role in this running back room? Just be Dalvin. Um, that's be me. My number get called. Go be explosive. Um, you know, I'm the, I'm the older guy in the room. You know, just share the knowledge. You know. I got a lot of experience in this game. You know, every little thing I could drop on those guys that I could, that I could just help them. You know, just be successful in this league. You know, I'm, I'm gonna give it to them. So just, just be me and, you know, help those guys grow. Um, that's it. Sorry about that. Apologize. Um, can you just, where are you now, like physically and with your shoulder? We know you had the surgery in February, right? So. How close are you to practicing, and what's stopping you from practicing now? Is it still the shoulder? Um, I got my baby doing on Saturday, so I'll be going back back home um, to go to go help with the labor. You know, um, but I think I'll be practicing within the next the next few days. Um, they reached out to my doctor, and you know everything's right on schedule. So just getting in with those guys, and then and then getting a good feel for you know how we want to do things, and I think we're gonna get things rolling real soon. Last few weeks, I know everyone talks about football and the training and getting in football shape. Have you been trying to do anything to replicate that? I've been working out. I've been grinding. Um, I've been sticking to my script every year. I do the same thing. You know, I got the same people I work with every year. Um, I got my group of guys that that keep hands on Dalvin Cook and know how I want to operate. And it's been the same thing for the last few years. So I just been sticking to my resume. So what does that work out? What does those workouts consist of? A lot of running back drills. Uh, Conditioning some days, speed work some days. I might get a lot of body work. It's just for me, you know, you get a lot of guys that do a lot of things outside their position. And for me, I just stick to my position. What's going to help me be successful the next year? What I can do to be better for myself the next year for my team? So that's the best of Dalvin Cook there from this press conference earlier today. And let's kind of react to some of the things that he said. I think the biggest thing that he said without saying it is if Aaron Rodgers is not the Jet quarterback, He's not a Jet. He kind of talked around the, well, you know, I can't answer that. He wouldn't be here. He's here to play with Aaron Rodgers because his comment before that was specific. Being on the other side of that for the last six years, I couldn't be on the other side of that no more. He chose the Jets over the Dolphins because Aaron Rodgers is better than Tua, period. Aaron Rodgers is the reason why a guy like Dalvin Cook wants to be here. And Rodgers took a huge pay cut with the intention being so the Jets have extra money to add a Dalvin Cook and still have flexibility to make a big splash closer to the trade deadline. I think that's obvious. He talked about the Jets being attractive, one, because of Rodgers, but also because of the coaches, the players on the roster. He talked specifically about the running back room. You guys see the Hard Knocks trailer for next week? They teased a little Dalvin cook Brees Hall conversation on the practice field from earlier today. This is going to work. Dalvin Cook, even if he's not what he was last year, is still the second best running back on this team. He was in the Pro Bowl last year. He had 1,100 rushing yards. The Jets have not had a 1,000-yard back since 2015. 
He's still a damn good player. And because the position has been devalued, you're able to get a guy who is still voted by GMs, offensive coordinators, and coaches in ESPN's top 10 poll they do every year as the number eight back in football. This guy is still a hell of a player. Let's not lose sight of that. And having Dalvin Cook and Brace Hall in the same offense, you could believe that Nathaniel Hackett and Rodgers will have plays where they're both on the field at the same time. You see the highlight of Brees Hall taking a quick slant to the house today. Those explosive plays could go to Brees, and then Dalvin Cook could still give you a lot out of the backfield as a runner or a receiver, just like Brees. You need more than one back in today's NFL. I thought it was cool that he talked about how it meant a lot to him that the fans were welcoming to him, chanting his name during his visit, chanting his name earlier today. Dalvin Cook with the Jets is going to work. One of the aspects they asked him about is, you know, he's he's dealing with a civil lawsuit right now. He's countersuing the woman who's accusing him of domestic violence accusations. He's denied all wrongdoing. He's countersuing, and he says he doesn't expect to be suspended at all. And I don't think the Jets would have signed him if they thought he was going to be suspended. So I think that narrative goes out the window. Samini tried to ask him about his shoulder injury. How come he's not practicing? And Dalvin's like, because I'm having a kid, but I'm going to be out there next week. I mean, let's be real. He shows up today. Because he wasn't going to practice today. Tomorrow's a walkthrough. Saturday's the game. Sunday's an off day. Jets don't practice till Monday. I expect Dalvin Cook to be out there on Monday. The latest by Tuesday. And that's what his answer there basically told you. And when the Jets signed Dalvin on Monday, I was on this show and I said, if it doesn't get done by today, I don't see it happening. I think the Jets gave Dalvin Cook's agents an ultimatum. Like, let's get a deal done or we're moving forward. Because the whole point of signing Dalvin Cook was so you have him as your Brees Hall insurance, as both guys can help each other out as they're coming off injuries. Right? Brees Hall doesn't need to be Brees Hall right away, although he might be because he's that special of a talent. But now you don't need the bank on that. Brees Hall is definitely playing week one, by the way. You don't take him off the pup list on August 15th like the Jets did two days ago for him to not play. He's playing week one, and Dalvin Cook obviously is too. But it had to get done by Monday because the whole point of bringing in Cook is so he's insurance for Brees. Dalvin Cook says he's in tremendous shape. I believe him. But we all understand that there's a difference between in shape and football shape. And the only way you get in football shape is by practicing with other NFL players at an NFL training camp. I particularly love Dalvin Cook's answer on his role on the team. He said, just be me. Number called, be explosive. That sounds like a good teammate to me. So I don't know if there's anything not to like with this Dalvin Cook signing. Seriously. And he's wearing the number 33 which means I could get the Jamal Adams jersey out of my closet here and get a nameplate for it at my local tailor. I mean, what's not to like? Dalvin Cook's still a hell of a player. And the last time the Jets were in this exact scenario where they had a championship window and they were going for it, they signed LaDainian Tomlinson, who was three years older than Dalvin Cook, and had that work out. LT was great in 2010. Dalvin Cook could provide a lot. And honestly, I was thinking about this. I think we underrate just how special Brees Hall was last year. I went back and watched some Brees Hall highlights. The thought of him and Dalvin Cook in the same backfield is, is scary. I think Aaron Rodgers recognizes that, and that's why he wanted Dalvin Cook. This guy still is a hell of a player. Even if there is some slippage this year in his game, he's still going to be the second-best running back on this team. I like Michael Carter. I like Izzy Abanaconda. Let's not discredit a Dalvin Cook season a year ago where he had 1,400 total yards. This guy's a weapon. He's a game-changer type talent. And I can't wait to watch him play for the Jets. I'm pumped. I think we will absolutely see plays where him and Brees Hall are in the backfield at the same time. Why wouldn't you? Get your best players on the field. You know, if Mike LaFleur was the offensive coordinator for the Jets, I would have no faith in that happening. This is a guy who decided to play Kenny Yeboah over Garrett Wilson last year. Remember that in week one? How silly that looked? Oh, my God. I have faith in this coaching staff, especially with Rodgers in charge here, that the best players are going to play. And I could definitely see packages where Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall are on the field at the same time. Honestly, why not have Dalvin Cook line up in the backfield and then use Brees Hall in the slot? You think, you think a linebacker could cover Brees Hall one-on-one? -on -one? You think most slot corners in the NFL could cover Brees Hall one-on-one? -on -one? 
And then, as Robert Sala talked about yesterday, if you're a defensive coordinator, you now have to account for Dalvin Cook coming out of the backfield. I could see a scenario where they're not just both lined up in the backfield, right? I see the scenario where Dalvin Cook is lined up in the backfield and Brees is in the slot. There's a lot to be excited about. If you're a defensive coordinator, your job is now harder when you're game planning for the Jets, period. That's exciting. So I don't, I don't think there's anything not to like with this signing. I'm pumped. And I loved what we heard today from Dalvin Cook. Speaking of things I love, all right, you guys see this, this wonderful beard that I'm sporting? It looks so good. It looks so clean. You can't smell me, but if you could, it's because I use Copper John's men's grooming products. I use their beard products, and I said this earlier. I'll say it again. You see the code Jake15 on the screen there? It's not 15%. From now till the end of August, it's actually 20% off. So if you want to support me as I make the venture to full-time YouTuber, support Copper Johns. Tyson, the owner, the founder of the company, he's a diehard Jets fan. So support him. If you have a beard, if you are someone with a mustache, they have all sorts of men's grooming products, and you can find it available at copperjohnsbeard.com. I am particularly a fan of the beard oil. Makes your beard smell nice. Makes it look clean. So check it out. Scan that QR code. I'll even make it easy. Let's go full screen here. Boom. Full screen. Scan the QR code. Takes you to the website. Check it out. They're a family-owned company. They are committed to taking you on a journey to create your perfect beard through their quality ingredients and scents. Oil, butter, you name it. They're going to make your beard look healthy, manly, and wise. Check it out. Copper Johns. The official men's grooming product of the Jake Asman Show. So there you go. Here we go. Let's open it up now. Your comments, your questions, anything Jet-related that is on your mind on the Gus Buster Umbrella Hotline. And we go out to Neil, who's smoking the stogie. Neil, you're first up. What's up, Neil? Jake, how are you? I'm great, Neil. Uh, Alvin Cook's a Jet, baby. You wanted it. You got it. It's happening. I'm going to tell you something. That opener, when they – just picture this in everybody's mind. When, when they have the, you know, the fireworks going and these guys are coming out of the tunnel one by one. I mean, we have star after star after star. I mean, this is like a Pro Bowl team on steroids. And I am telling you, it's going to be amazing. Like you said, both of these guys out of the backfield at once. You know, I, 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 we did that a little bit last year, if I recall. And it worked really well. Um, the offensive line, I want to talk about, you know, I want to have a, I have a little thought and question for you. When you talk about the best five, I, I don't think we obviously don't have our offensive line set as of yet. We got to get Dwayne Brown back. We have to see what Makai does in the next game. It's going to be very critical how he acclimates to right tackle, but Unlike last year, I know everybody's panicking. Every news thing I put on, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. Yep. We have, you know, good backups. I don't say great backups, but we have so much more depth and so much more versatility, okay? When you look at Bill Belichick, what is he – he takes players that could play multiple positions. That's mm -hmm. the key – to having a good offensive line. You have to have guys that can play multiple positions. You put let they put Tipman at left tackle today. They're probably going to give him snaps at I mean left, left guard. guard. Yep. They're, they're going to give him snaps at right guard. You have everybody on the line that could play multiple positions. So, if somebody goes down, which is inevitable. I mean, look at Armstead went down for Miami today. You know, everybody's going to lose people, all right? The key is off balance. When you see the when you see them stack in the box, you know. Last year, you got to realize something. Last year, all you had to do to play the Jets is stack the box. Exactly. Because we had Zach behind us. He wasn't going to throw everybody's head. He well, wasn't going to throw it. quick screens. Think about he it, Neil. Throw right. I mean, yeah. Think about it though, too. And great call to start us off. Like last year, I didn't hear anyone complaining about the offensive line when Brees Hall was going for a buck ninety-seven on the Dolphins last year. I didn't hear anyone complaining about the offensive line when Brees Hall was torching the Denver Broncos or the Green Bay Packers. 
right? Like it's the same offensive line they had a year ago. It's just guys are now healthy this year, barring Dwayne Brown coming back here, which they insist he will. And I have no reason to think the Jets aren't telling the truth, right? They said Brees Hall would definitely play week one. Well, he's up the pup list on August 15th. He practiced today. So I agree. I agree with Neil. I'm not as down on this offensive line as maybe some are. Like, if people talking about the offensive line struggling, it'd be more concerning if they're struggling with Dwayne Brown, AVT, and Lakin out there. They're not out there yet. Makai Becton hasn't taken any first-team snaps yet. I think that's coming. I'm really encouraged by what I'm hearing about Becton. Forget what the beat might be telling you. People I'm talking to, I've been really encouraged by what they've seen with Becton. I bet you we see Becton play a lot of right tackle on Saturday. If he gets through that unscathed, I think he's getting first-team reps as early as Monday. And they're amping him up. So I think the benefit the Jets have, as Neil's talking about, is the versatility, right? He mentioned he mentioned Tipman being able to now to play guard. What if there's a scenario where Lakin's not one of their best five? What if they put Tipman at left guard? McGovern's the center. AVT plays right guard. How about right tackle Makai Becton with Dwayne Brown at left tackle? Could that be the best five? So I think it's actually a fascinating scenario the Jets have. They have eight guys for five spots. And when we heard that, it's like, yeah, okay. You know, you, you definitely have a preference. I think they're truly having an open competition right now. I think there'll come a point where when you get within two weeks, you definitely want to announce your starters, at least internally. But I think they're truly going to give Tipman a chance to be the center, maybe start at guard. Beck did a chance to start at right tackle. Dwayne Brown still has to definitely come back and prove he's back, but I think he's the left tackle when he's back. I can't freak out about the O-line on August 17th when a bunch of their main guys have not been out there yet. So I, I think it's a good call by Neil to start us off. And I can't wait to see Neil week one, baby. The Neil Sprinter on our way to MetLife. Post-game show on the way back. Imagine how crazy Neil's going to be on that. Good God. Some super chats here. Fly by night starts us off. Best of luck, Jake. We got your back. I'm signing up for the Patreon tonight. Let's go, Jake. I mean, Jets. Let's go Jake and Jets, baby. Thank you, uh, Fly By Night. Yeah, Patreon's a great way to support the show. Uh, it, it obviously helps me. Five bucks a month, you get all the extra perks with it. And uh, that's that's super helpful uh, for you if you're a Jet fan. You get more content. Craig writes in, back to New York, meant to be. Definitely going to be in New York a lot more. My lease here ends in December, so we'll see where I'm at after that. But 100%, man, 100%. I'm definitely going to week one now, that's for sure. That's locked in. Hawk says, Jake's beard looks like it smells like excellence. Oh, it definitely does, Hawk. It definitely does. That's because I use Copper John's beard products, man. Come on. We're not messing around here. Look at that logo. Speaking of a beer that smells like excellence, the logo for Copper John's. Excellence. V-Man writes in, Neil, where do your cigars come from? My great-grandpa was a cigar roller in Puerto Rico. All right, well, Neil, I see you still on hold, so I'll ask him. Here you go, B-Man, just for you. Neil, where do your cigars come from? Well, I have a variety of cigars I smoke, but mostly I smoke a farm-rolled cigar from Cuba that I get uh, directly from a farm. They're actually wrapped in Cuban writing newspapers, which is pretty cool. How about that? And, and, and you have to age them. You know, I have several humidors, and I age them, and they're fantastic, but... I usually smoke one of those after dinner, but during the day, you know, I smoke a, a Monte Cristo, you know, uh, AJ Fernandez is a great cigar. Um, but I've been smoking cigars since I'm 23 years old. Uh, <laughs> my fa actually, I never smoked cigarettes. My father-in-law got me hooked on cigars. He's like a, uh, uh, off the boat Italian. And, after after one amazing dinner when I was in college, walked out in the garage. He says, look, here's a yeah, grab a cigar. Let's have a smoke. And I started ever since. Yeah, he quit smoking when he was 80. He's still hot. He's still not. He's 90 years old. Wow. Still alive. Still eating tremendous meals every day. Him and my mother-in-law cook from one o'clock in the afternoon till six. And they have every one of their four daughters over during the week. <laughs> for a meal. And he sits there and he complains about me smoking cigars. So I really, and, and that's why my wife can't really complain about me smoking because her father got me hooked on him. That's... So um, I could smoke anywhere I want. I just like smoking out in the summertime outside on the golf course. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great, but I love it. Now let me I, ask you this, Neil, 
victory cigar after week one, correct? Uh, yeah, I, I'm actually, you know, the, the guy with the, we'll have to discuss the sprinter ride. I have a, <laughs> I have a, a rabbit, uh, sanitizer that basically cleans the air. Like if they haven't been cigar lounges that I could plug right into the sprinter. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pollute you. You'll be coughing all the way home. So <laughs> we're going to have a pregame, you know, when we get to the L5, I'll, we'll park at L5. We have to yep. figure out how to get there. We'll open it up. Um, we have a tremendous food uh, situation. I make a concoction that we're going to have that's just amazing. So I am so looking forward to uh, the tailgate, the whole at situation. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's going to be great. I'm, I, I just can't tell you. I, it can't come soon enough. The Let's season go, baby. can't come soon enough, baby. Let's I go. am pumped. And I want to talk to you about a sponsorship. Here's my company. We'll talk about that afterwards. You got uh, it separately, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. I don't I don't have a beard for Copper Johns, you know, a little whiskers over here. But uh, I'll, I'll get I'll get you some uh, goatee wax. They have everything. Oh, I they have you. goatee wax. Also? I got you. Yes, they have oh, everything. Oh wow, I got you, deal. Great call. I love that. That's uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, it, it, you haven't made it in life unless you smoke a cigar with Neil. So I'm looking forward to that after the Jet win opening night against the Bills. So there you go, B-Man. We got your question answered. B. Lopez says, new defensive name, the Wall Sack Street. The play on the city, I don't I don't dislike, right? We don't want to do the sack exchange, so it's come up with something else. My favorite on, on that has been Sack Fifth Avenue for the nickname for the D-Line. That's been my favorite so far if we're going to do like a city reference. Blitz new or Blitz Crew writes in, I know our issues at offensive tackle. Thoughts on the guard depth. Healthy starters seem good. Backup situation seems like it could be improved. Wouldn't shock me if Douglas is scouring the waiver wire for someone with uh, some versatility at guard and tackle. Uh, but I'll say this. I think Wes Schweitzer is an upgrade on Dan Feeney, who was kind of the swing guard last year. And I think McGovern, if he doesn't start, he's your swing center slash guard option. That's pretty good. A guy who's durable and started every game the last couple of years. I think they got more than we may realize. How about this super chat from Day Boss? Oh man, what a super chat! A hundred buckaroos, less Houston, more Jake. This will be an awesome season. No hate, amen. Less Houston. How about no Houston? <laughs> That's it. I'm out. You know, two thirds of the wheelhouse leaves. They fire you on Monday. I'm out. So I'm in, baby. Jet YouTube, New York sports content, hosting on ESPN New York starting tomorrow, six a to ten a. Check it out. Can't wait to be filling in for Rick and Dave on ESPN New York. Axios. And by the way, thanks again to Dave Boss, man. A hundred bucks. You kidding me? For a guy just talking about a football team on the internet? That's wild. Appreciate you. Axios writes in, any chance you or Boy Green or X Factor or the local kindergarten can head to practice and fix the damn audio for practice pressers? Must be a hundred boom mics over there. Th this super chat is hilarious for a bunch of reasons. One, the Jets' quality of audio during the press conferences is so trash. This guy is so fired up about it. He wanted to complain about it. And two, the irony of it being trash when you have Hard Knocks and One Jet Stride filming everything with their equipment, also hilarious. You're right. I don't know why they don't have a microphone that they hand to the reporters so they can ask their questions and it picks that up. And then the microphone where Salah or the players are speaking into, that's what you hear on these press conferences. So when I edit these clips, I got to like boost the reporter audio because it's coming from the press conference, mic that Salah or the players are using. They should just do this. Hey, here you go. Here's a mic to the reporters. And then you have the press conference mic that'd be over here. It's really not that hard. But apparently uh, the Jets are going cheap on reporter mics. I don't know. Let's get back to your calls right now. Here we go. Let's go to V-Man. Speaking of the devil. What's up, V-Man? Hey, what's up, Nick? Congrats on um, getting out of Texas. Now you don't have to worry about the power grid failing and you being <laughs> in the car. You're not wrong, but I'm here till probably December, so I'm still worried about the power grid failing, believe me. No, uh, you're surprised that I remember that clip of you in the news. I I am impressed. But that but that was uh that, that was because of the cold, not not the heat. We haven't had the power grid hasn't failed with the energy yet, which is good for at least once a summer. So I'm still waiting for that. Yeah, no, but yeah, but congratulations, but yeah, congratulations, get it, getting off, off of, getting out of, congratulations, now you get to enjoy, you know, 
New York. Now you don't have to worry about cardboard and cheese. That's Houston pizza. Yeah, well, I'm still here. I'm still here for a little while, man. I'll be back in New York a lot more. Like I said, honestly, like I said, honestly, I'm glad for you. I'm glad for you that you're gonna be able to get back to New York eventually. So maybe you can, maybe, maybe you'll be able to enjoy me and Matt on our little excursion exploring each other's culture. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm very. I'm very excited to to, uh, to see this. Yeah. So, yeah. So like. So if you don't know, uh, I. I, we're going to see who parties harder, the Irish or the Puerto Ricans. You told so. me this. Yes, the, the audience is aware. You and O'Leary, you guys are hitting the clubs together. I heard there's some strip clubs going down as well. I heard it's a wild escapade you got planned. No, so what it is is we're going to see who part nah, We're going to hang up. I'm going to experience St. Patrick's Day as a Puerto Rican. Yep. I'm going to see how Irish hang, party on St. Patrick's Day. And then, you, and then Matt's going to see how Puerto Ricans party on the 116th Street Festival. Yeah, look, it's it's gonna be wild, to be man. So yeah, you're 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 well. If you're here, if you're in the area, you're welcome to come along. Now, V man, who was calling you the other day? I don't think you've ever answered this. Who, who was calling V man Enterprises in the middle of your call? Uh, family. Family. How's business? <laughs> Same as always. <laughs> so business is booming. Got it. All right. There you go. Business still booming. Let's go to George. He's up next of the Ghostbuster Hotline. We'll keep rolling through your calls here on the show. What's up, George? Hey, Jake. How's it going? What's up, man? How are you? Well, I'm good. Um, I'm going to New Jersey for the first time to see the New York Jets. I'm gonna. My seats are going to be Section 103, Row 11, Seat 5 and 6, and I'm bringing my friend who's a Packers fan. I'm still a Packers fan. I'm both. But um, I'm so disgusted with the Packers organization, just how they treated Aaron Rodgers over the years, that I've always kind of liked the Jets a little bit because of Rex Ryan. Mm -hmm. So I'm both. But I'm going to be flying this nice. at the stadium. How about that? So what, what game did you say you're going to? Uh, September 11th. Are oh, you going to the opener? Wow. Yeah, the opener. Nice, man. Well, you're going to see uh, you're going to see a show that night. I can promise you that. Yeah. So. It'll be awesome. I'll probably be on TV because they usually show rows like 34 to like uh, the first one. So that'll be awesome. But I got this flag on Amazon and it's a Jets retro flag. It's freaking awesome. How much was that? I might have to buy one for the man cave. That looks nice. Um, It was like 30 bucks. All right. Not terrible. Yeah. George, thank you for your service. Ha have a great time at week one, man. It's going to be nuts. Going to be nuts. Some super chats, then back to your calls. Rat did. He says, move in with V-Man, Jake. He has the space. <laughs> I don't know, man. V-Man's a busy guy. You know, I, he's building an empire in, out of his room. I don't know if there's room. Manny writes in, I call the Jets defense the green wave attacking waves. The green wave is not bad. That's not terrible because, you know, the Jets have described their pass rush as, as it comes in waves. So that's not terrible, Manny. Ultimately, if the Jets D-line gets a nickname, it's going to come from the Jets D-line, I think. What do they call themselves? Like, I'm pretty sure the Legion of Boom named themselves the Legion of Boom. So we'll see. Let's keep rolling here. The King is on the hotline. King Lowski's up next. What's up, King? Jake, my brother, how are you doing? <laughs> Man, I'm... I, I, I'm doing well, King. I, you called it earlier, right? A little, little double dip today. I love it. Jake, you ain't never going to believe who's sitting uh, with me here in the car. <laughs> it's me, man. <laughs> so what's up? Oh, God. Do you have, like, some weird pain fetish? I ain't got no freaking idea what the hell he's <laughs> saying, but I'm going to tell you this about the... <laughs> All right, I got to go. All right. Honestly... It's just driving me. Will crazy. you shut the hell up, V-Man? I'm trying to do my thing. <laughs> I am King Lowski, and the Jets are going to win this year. The Russian Minister of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, and the General oh Chief of Staff. I don't uh, care about any of that. You no know, way. Jake, we are going to kick some ass this year, and I'm going to do it with or without V-Man. Hypocrite a bit much? Sorry, I am. You want me to give you those ten years your phone number? I got no idea what you're talking about, V-Man. Get the hell out of my car and take your grandfather with you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, Gator, you're nuts, bro. Bro. 
Yo, Gator is nuts. I I got so duped there. I legitimately thought that was cake. That is wild how he did that. <laughs> how does he even do that? How does one do that off this this program? Like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that that might have been my favorite one because i had no idea and it lasted a couple minutes <laughs> like oh my and he didn't just get right into it right away i was like oh king you're calling back for the second time today and then it started <laughs> oh man i mean gator's unbelievable folks I, I like he is pound for pound maybe the most like talented person on youtube it's nuts. Check out his YouTube channel, Gator McCluskey Reviews, and everyone subscribe to him because he's unbelievable. And speak of the devil, look who just called in. The I I I think, or maybe not, the real King Loski has called in. King, is this actually you? <laughs> hey man, that's, that boy Gator man, boy Gator, you the goat man, you the goat. I know you was gonna get me sooner or later, Gator. You the go up for sure. <laughs> oh man. He hey, got man. Me. hey man, I, I wasn't gonna call in because I, I don't like to oversaturate myself because you know I how I, I get Jake. But damn man, <laughs> damn, how good does this feel, man? Jets fans, can y'all really feel that this team is all in, Ooh. baby? We are all the freak in, bro. I mean, I can just feel that from the Dalvin Cook interview, man. Everybody is playing their role. Everybody is starting to jail, man. The offensive line ain't going to be a problem by the time we get to week one. I'm telling you, we're going to run the ball down one-dimensional, overrated Buffalo's throat. We gonna do that. I feel that J J E P S Jets Jets Jets, Jet, baby. Let's, let's go. go. Baby. Let's go, King. I love it. The real King checking in. The man wasn't even gonna call, and then Gator called as him. That's unbelievable. That that was so funny, man. Unreal. You know you've made it when Gator does an impression of you. If you're if you're a Jake Asman show caller who's been parodied by Gator, you know you made it. Like that's a sign that you have made it. <laughs> Manny with a super chat. He cuts the line. Oh, I read that already. The green wave. Yes. Good nickname. Uh, let's see. Make sure we didn't miss any super chats. That's the best way to reach the show. Let's get back to your calls right now. Let's go to Mr. Bonesy. He's a regular. Bonesy, you could be up next, man. You could be parodied from the shoe store soon. Who knows? Yo, um, I know I'm on the list. I'm on the uh, I'm on the kill list next, but <laughs> how do you follow up those calls? Fucking games. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still crying. When, when, when Lowski first called up, I was like, ah, oh, shit, I got to follow up Lowski. <laughs> it was first beaming. <laughs> I'm still crying from that, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I still just want to say, shout out to Jake Ashman. We need tomorrow to blow up these phone lines, fellas. We need to be on our game. We need to be supporting. I'm calling in like 10 times until they don't let me no more. Uh, so I tried calling you earlier because what you guys were talking about was like the hate on the Jets and people, the Tampa Bay Buccaneer reporter. we got to get used to that. You know what I'm saying? Like we're going to be getting bullets shot at us all the time. We're on the, the bright lights. Like people are after us. We're the talk of the NFL. We're all over every segment of ESPN. Like, this is what it's going to be, you know? So we can't be getting mad every time something says, you know, someone says something messed up. Haters are going to hate. To quote Cat Williams, haters going to hate. Let them do their jobs and hate. We're here to rock our jets. We're good. Keep hating. One last thing about the offensive line. I feel like with, with Brown, we still don't know what he's doing. He should be fine when he comes back. This guy played through – a separated shoulder for 10 games. We know we're going to get his best. He played through a separated shoulder for 10 games, and that was to protect Zach Wilson and, and uh, Mike White and Joe Flacco. So and He was good. With Aaron Rodgers, he was statistically good when he was out there, too. He, he played fine, especially in pass pro. You know what yep. I'm saying? We're, we're getting killed. He played good in pass pro. Run, run. He couldn't, you know, push the line. That's what we got begged him for. You know what I'm saying? So we need to be patient. 
And let's see how Becton plays at right tackle uh, on Saturday. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep, absolutely. Patience, fellas. We got ABT, chest piece. He can go anywhere. Let's just be – and you know, last thing, her big – that type of signing off the waivers, that's what Joe Douglas does. So we are in good hands. Everybody's just got to relax. J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 J-A-K-E, Jake, Jake, Jake. <laughs> I love it, Bozy. Thank you, man. Bozy always calling the Jake Asman show, which we appreciate. Uh, and he mentioned it. Yeah, if you guys if you guys feel free. I mean, Dan Grasso and I, Dan Grasso does pre and post for the Jets on ESPN New York. So I'm sure we'll do a lot of Jets talk on the show tomorrow. So check it out, 6A to 10A. Excited to be filling in for DiPietro and Rothenberg with Dan tomorrow morning. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Let's get back to your calls right now. Man, we just had a who's who of callers today. Unbelievable. Let's go to, hey, Jeremy, if you get your camera on, we'll go to you. While we wait for Jeremy's camera, we'll go to Arizona Jet, who's up next on the show. What's up, Arizona? How do I follow up on those calls, man? Gator, King Lowski, and Bonesy. Jeez, I don't even know how I follow up. How about up Gator, G- Gator as Lowski with V-Man mixed in? I mean, come on now. Yeah, man, it's like it's crazy. But like, I wanted to say, man, congratulations on on your new venture, man. Like, Thank it's you. a blessing. In, it's a blessing in disguise. And honestly, man, I think you're getting too big for a show like uh, ESPN Houston. So uh, you're gonna do big things, man. I really feel that. But uh, anyway, I wanted I wanted you. to say, uh, you know, I'm gonna be one of those players, or you know, in, in football, uh, the fantasy football, that uh, is picking all the Jets players, man. I'm going to be reaching for the players and just just a team full of Jets players. I mean, I know you can't win fantasy that way. And uh, also, can we get a petition to get you to work on the Jets uh, uh, team sideline or whatever and, and get rid of Rich Samini? Because I think you would be a lot more exciting than Rich Samini, and he doesn't even like the Jets. That's, That's a different job. I, I, I could try. Look, I, I don't always agree with uh, Rich's opinions or sometimes how I feel like. Can we get you in there, though, man? Because I think you would do a better job than that. Well, I so it's, it's not a job I'd want. Like Rich is oh, a beat yeah, writer true. covering the team. You're not allowed to be a fan. Like what I love about this YouTube channel is like I'm a Jet fan. Like, yes, I guess I am a, a, a talk show host, but I'm not a journalist. Like a journalist is unbiased. You you don't give That's opinions. True. Like I am a fan first who happens to like give opinions yeah. on the radio too. Like it's like the best of both worlds. Like Rich, Rich has to be a quote unquote unbiased, yeah. you know, beat reporter. Like is, what I is do he is not what he does. Fan? I don't I, I don't think he's a fan. He's just he just has been around the team for 30 years. The team has mostly been bad. So I just think it naturally just comes out that it's going to be yeah. negative because in his life, how many seasons has he covered where the Jets have been a good team? Like that, oh, that's I think true. that's just that's why I appreciate some of the you know the the new the new guys we have on the beat who I don't think you know have a, a preconceived notion that no matter what the Jets do, it's not going to work, right? Like I think there's guys that have been around maybe a couple of years that maybe view the Jets differently than someone who's seen all the bad for the last 30, like Rich has. Yeah. Also, man, I need to get me some Copa Johns, man. My my beard gets itchy. I need some beard oil. Oh, dude, you would like the beard bomb then, too. I beard mean, bomb, nice. I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert in this stuff because I just started using the product a month ago. But, man, like, I used to have the same problem in the Houston heat. And, like, my oh, beard, it itches, man. My beard doesn't itch anymore because of all, like, the, 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 re- like, just the, 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 it makes it smooth and, like, you smell nice. I love it, man. Check it out. It's 20% off until the end of the month. So take advantage. Nice. Thanks, Jake. You got it. Thank you for the call. Let's go to Jeremy. His camera's on. Oh, look who it is. It's our guy, Jeremy from Jets Chaos. What's up, Jeremy? <laughs> What's going on, man? Hey, what, one thing that's going around, I don't know how you feel about it. I mean, I think I know how you feel about it. It's bothering me. So I keep hearing people say, if Becton wins the right tackle spot. Yep. Let, me, let me just say this. If he's healthy, he's winning the spot. There's no way Turner and Mitchell – are in the same category or league as a healthy Becton. Yep. And I really think people are just forgetting the way he played his rookie year. Uh, I, I don't disagree with you. I just wonder, does the coaching staff trust him to win the job? And what I mean by that is like, yeah, they might they might like him to like, like talent-wise, you're right. He's, he's definitely their best option at right tackle from a talent standpoint. But I, I think it's more so about, hey, if we put him out there, you know, are, are they going to be concerned midway through the game he has to come out because he's feeling something in his knee? Like if they're going to give him all the reps with the ones, they want to make sure he definitely could get through uh, multiple games, weeks of practice, because then it's like, well, we want to prepare Mitchell or Turner if they got to come in and play with the ones because we don't know if Becton's going to be good to go. So that's why I think you're right, but they're they're working towards Becton being able to do what you're saying, if that makes sense. Right, and as long as it, like, as long as long he can go as many reps as they are asking him to go, he even wanted to go more. If he stays healthy and he's doing all those reps, it's, you know, obviously that's only that's all he can do. 
All he could do is play as many reps as they'll allow him to play. And then at that point, it's just like everybody else. Anybody can get hurt. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just one of the things that happened. And that's why Mitchell and Turner are there if he gets hurt. Yeah. And you know, it's also interesting, too. The one thing I'd push back on what the Jets have said, it's like, oh, well, we want to see Makai Beckton get through, a, you know, get through a full game and whatnot. Well, M Makai wanted to stay in last week and they took him out after 27 snaps. So it's like you can't say, oh, we need to see Makai get through a full game. But then it's like, well, he's playing well last week. He wants to stay out there. And then you take him back. It's like, well, that, that's a little hypocritical. Like if he wants to play, let him play. No. Yeah, I, w I was baffled by that. The fact that it, but it's, it's, it's a great sign that he wanted to stay in. That's really awesome yep. news for all of us. We should all celebrate that. That he wanted to stay in the game and that wasn't him that took himself out, which is a relief. Yeah, and then I you know, I think part of it's like, hey, he's played well. Let's get him out on a high note. He played more than they thought he would. And then you know, let's not uh, underrate. How about the conversation with him and Rodgers at the end of the Hard Knocks episode? I think that's big. If Rodgers trusts him, he's going to advocate for him to be out there. Tre tremendous, tremendous. To me, that meant so much because Aaron Rodgers, if there's one thing we've learned about him or know about him, he's not going to say something he doesn't mean. If he doesn't believe – if he didn't believe that Beckton was grinding and doing everything he could, he wouldn't have said it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he said that means that's what he's seeing. 100%. Yeah, great call, Jeremy. What do you guys have coming up on your show, man? You're, I, I see you putting out great content constantly. Plug yourself. Thanks, man. I, well, hey, you know, I'm on every Sunday and Wednesday night, um, and I'll be with Green Bean on Saturday doing a reaction party on their channel. Yeah. Uh, you know. So that that's my normal stuff. Just, uh, but thank you, I appreciate that. Of course, man. How about our guy Green being hanging out with Joe Douglas today at Jets camp? I am bugging out, man. I'm texting him and asking him how he got that <laughs> access, and he like he's messing him with me and saying, "Hey, your mother gave me the ticket." I'm like, dude, I'm, I want to know how you got that access. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Green Bean. That's awesome, man. Thanks for the call, Jerry. Good luck with the show. All right, thanks, bro. That's awesome. That's that sounds like Green Bean, right? I got to text Green Bean and ask. I saw that picture of him with JD. I'm like, man, like, what's the deal? Uh, let's see. The salty teacher says much love and support Jake. You should be in New York, not Houston. Thank you. Salty teacher. I'll say this. I love Houston. It, it has nothing to do with the city of Houston. It's just, you know, the, the, the shittiness of radio sometimes, man, you know, what, you know, one day you're doing a show and then two of the, two of the three people on the show for various reasons, leave within a week of each other. And you know, when you're the last one, you're vulnerable and things like this could happen. So without getting into any other details, that's it's kind of the, the crappy side of this business at times, but most people, when they get let go, they don't have a full-time job on YouTube. They could turn to like I can. So now I don't have to do both. Now I can focus on New York, ESPN, New York, other radio opportunities and this channel full-time, which I am thrilled about. So it is what it is without having to say anything else. All right, let's keep rolling with your calls. Now this guy's been on hold for a while. We appreciate it. Let's go to Bobby. He's up next on the show. What's up, Bobby? Hey, congratulations on your pickup. Uh, you know, cook is going to be great for you guys. And I think the Jets have 90% chance of winning the Super Bowl. 90%? Yes. That's pretty high. Uh, you know, that's uh, I'd sign up for those odds right now, Bobby. And do you do you guys pick up that guy from uh, Green Bay, the offensive tackle? Uh, you know, are you talking about the all-pro offensive tackle that Aaron Rodgers played with? Yes. Did you pick uh, him they up? Had, no. To this point, it's all just kind of oh. conjecture and – Oh, rumors true. and whatnot. There's there is oh. no circumstantial evidence that the New York Jets to this point will be trading for all pro left tackle David Bakhtiari. Okay, and my brother says hello. I get in trouble if I don't mention him because he likes you very much. Hundred percent. Bobby. Yeah. Shout out to you and Mikey. Appreciate your call as always, Bobby. Manny writes in with a super chat. A lot of old Jets players showing up at training camp. A Vinny Testaverde signing. How about this picture today that Woody tweeted out? Vinny T, Mark Sanchez, and Phil Sims. Those three guys won a lot of big games as quarterback of New York football teams. It was pretty cool. Nick Mangle was out there today getting cheers from the Jet fans, which was great. Curtis Martin's been out there. Eric Decker was out there yesterday. Um, Braylon Edwards was out there yesterday. Brandon Marshall's been out there. It's cool that the Jets alum all come back, and there's been more coming back this year than any other year I can remember. I think that's what Woody Johnson's done a really good job at. Uh, the the, Jet, the Jets are very good from what I've been told by former players that we've had on the show, either off the air or on the air. Like Mike DeVito was telling me about this off air, that like the Jets are very good with their alum. Not every NFL team is. So they do a good job with that. I think they deserve some credit for that. 
Let's go back to the Gus Buster hotline. Terrell is next up on the show. What's up, Terrell? How you doing, Jake? Good to see you. What's up, man? Uh, I, I wanted to say uh, I want to make a prediction. I do think that when the center job, uh, it's all said and done. I don't think you draft a guy first, first center overall or first center of the draft taken, and, and that doesn't happen where he doesn't start. So I think he will. He has the most talent. Same, it's similar to Beckham. Um, and then, ah, Terrell, we're gonna let you go. I, I think I got most of your first part, but your audio was uh was cutting out big time there. I believe you said you think Tipman's gonna start because they took him as high as they did. I I tend to agree with you. If he doesn't start week one, he's starting pretty soon. I mean, one injuries happened, but two, he's going from third string to now he's rotating reps with Connor McGovern at center. Like, why do you think that is? It's because he's been so good in these games. They're giving him every opportunity to play in four preseason games to win the job. In fact, he might not even play in the last game if they determine he's the starter. This could be Tipman's last opportunity to play. Because I think the Jets will treat this game on Saturday like it is the dress rehearsal, and they'll treat the Giant game like it's a game where none of the starters will play at all because they'll get that extra two weeks before week one on Monday Night Football. So I definitely could see that. James writes in with a super chat. Jake, you're so loved on YouTube that we're celebrating and congratulating you getting fired. Their loss, if only this happened when New York was reshuffling the FAN lineup. Jake and Evan for afternoon drive. Two redheads, uh, James. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, look, it's it's the crappy side of radio, right? You know, it's it, it, this stuff happens. But once again, the business has changed so much. Like, it, like I'll, I'll put it in. I'll, I'll give you guys a great example of this. Like, Matt O'Leary has become a good friend of mine. His full time job is Jets YouTube. Imagine living in a world where you could do videos 24-7, 365 about one team and make a full-time salary. Like, that's crazy. That's what Matt does. So it, it could be done, man. Really can. Especially if you get some sponsors, which we're now adding to the show. So I'm thrilled, man. I really am. I'm excited about the future. Thank you for the, uh, the kind words and the super chat, though, James. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. A lot of people excited about Vinny being at practice today. Vinny and the Jets. Arizona Jet writes in. Intrigued who's going to be the starting line for week one. I, look, my prediction still left to right at this point, and it could change because I truly think Becton's making a real run here. Left to right, I think it's Dwayne Brown, Lakin Tomlinson, Joe Tipman, Wes Schweitzer, ABT. That's what I think it will be. I also think there's a strong scenario where Makai Becton's the right tackle, put ABT at right guard, or Max Mitchell's the right tackle and ABT stays at guard. A lot of unknowns. I don't know. I don't know if we truly, truly could handicap it just yet because there's there's too many wild cards here, man. What if Dwayne Brown doesn't come back? They say he is. I have no reason to think they're not telling the truth, but you never know. There are moves to be made. Uh, let's make sure we didn't miss any big-time comments here. MM says, y'all be tripping. Our O-line is a leaking faucet, all because JD doesn't know how to draft. Oh, man. FM? So is this like a fake FM or a real FM? What do you guys think? The logo is FM. Is it an FM parody or the real FM? I'm not sure. Think it over in the realm. Into the shadow realm you go. Come on with the Jets nonsense. But I honestly think that Daniel Jones is going to have a better season than Aaron Rodgers. Does Tiki Barber still think uh, Daniel Jones is going to have a better season, by the way, than Aaron Rodgers? I wonder if he actually believes that nonsensical hot take he spurted out there. VR says, Jets D money, sack guarantee. The Jets D line is money. Well, I think it was a fake FM because the other FM who made a new account just to join and Evan, who paid me 300 bucks to send him to the round for life, said it's okay. He's on probation for now. He's commenting. Blitz League says, I haven't heard much about Corey Davis. Could he be cut? No, I, I don't think so. I'm surprised there has not been any announcement about his contract being restructured. 
Dick Chimney, a.k.a. Rich Samini, came on this show, and he was insistent that uh, Corey Davis's cap hit would be restructured, like Jameson Crowder a couple of years ago, but I, I haven't heard much about that. And Corey Davis missed the last two practices for personal reasons, so I hope everything's okay. But, no, nah, Corey Davis is on this team. He's, he's, he's probably wide receiver two or three, at least early on. John writes in, Jake, why are teams canceling joint practices with us? Well, the Jets canceled the one today. Last week, because of the weather, they canceled it, but the Jets ended up finding a window where it wasn't raining in Carolina to practice. So, I mean, e each practice was canceled for various reasons. They still had a joint practice. They still did one last week and this week. Jason says, how's Vera Tucker look so far, in your opinion? Everything I've heard has been he's AVT. I mean, he's an all-pro level player. Gator checks in, the star of today's show, if we're being real. Smash the like button. 100%. Best way to support me is by liking every video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't, and then, of course, the way you could additionally support me is by signing up for my Patreon. And just today alone, I want to give a couple of big shout outs to our newest Patreon subscribers. This is just from today. It just shows you how great the Jet fan base truly is. Leo Baton, shout out to you, Leo. Jonathan Haas, shout out to you. Adam Wolf, Scott Luchinger, William Sprague, John Hybenal, Devin Sarno, Planet Cameron, KJ, and Corey Schloda. Can't thank you guys enough for signing up for the Patreon. Awesome. Make sure after you sign up for the Patreon, you then download a di the Discord app if you don't have it, and you'll see on Patreon, you can connect the Patreon to the Discord automatically. And it's and it's great. You join, you'll be welcomed in with open arms from everyone in the Discord. Be prepared. It gets rowdy in there. Super chat from Douglas. With the throwback uniforms, I'd like to see some offensive players from that era make an appearance. Walker, Toon, McNeil, O'Brien, etc. Yeah, a lot of those guys were at Joe Klecko's Hall of Fame induction two weeks ago. Douglas, they were at his party. Kenny O'Brien was there, which was great to see. Uh, I'd like to see it, too. We'll see if some of those guys come back to practice. 100%. Jacob says, are Cowboys fans welcome? Yeah, you could root for any team but the Patriots and sign up for the Patreon. If you're a Patriot fan, I don't want your five bucks a month. No, thank you. Uh, let's make sure we didn't miss any comments here. Mike says, like the smash. <laughs> like the smash, smash the like button. It's all the same. Jorge says, by week three, our O-line will be unrecognizable. I, I think the O-line, in theory, as long as there's no injury, should get better with more playing time, though. That's why I think the defense has to be the tone setter for the Jets. First six games, you play four of the top ten offenses in the league from last year. You have to set the tone with a defense that has nine of its 11 starters back. And I think where the starters aren't back, they've upgraded. I think Tony Adams is an upgrade over LaMarcus Joyner. I think Al Woods is an upgrade over Sheldon Rankins. I do. He's just as good if he's not an upgrade. And I think the, the addition of Will McDonald, who will play a role right away, as we all could clearly see where this is headed based on watching Hard Knocks last week and seeing what he's done through two games, and the emergence of Jermaine Johnson taking a step, I think this defense could be better than it was last year. They could force some more turnovers. They will be better. Even if statistically they allow more points per game, but they force some more turnovers, that's all that matters. FM signs up or writes in, can I sign up for Patreon? Hmm. I don't know, FM. You'll, 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 be, you, you'll be on very strict probation if you sign up for the Patreon. You're allowed to. But you're going to be heavily watched by our, our Discord monitors, moderators. 
Dave says we must beat the patch twice. It's imperative. Oh, yeah. It's a must. Bonesy, I really hope we don't sell our tickets to Buffalo fans Monday night. That's a common thing that happens with us. I don't think for this game, right? Not when Aaron Rodgers is the quarterback. No, no way. No how. Shout out to Daniel. He just signed up for Patreon. Thank you to Daniel Purcell. How about that? I, we're nearing 200 Patreon subscribers. That is fantastic. But think about it. There's so much room for growth. I have 32,000 YouTube subscribers. So if you're enjoying all this great content, now that I'm doing this full time, best way to ensure I can continue this is to go to patreon.com slash Jake Hasman show. Larry says too much buzz around this team. I don't have time for this today, Larry. Into the shadow realm you go. Now the Jets are kind of dysfunctional and not a perfect roster. The buzz is because they're a good team, Larry. The Jets themselves aren't talking about winning the Super Bowl. You hear Salah's speech? You probably like that speech from Salah because you're the biggest Salah hater ever. He said all we proved last year is we're a 7-10 and team with a good defense while ripping into the offense last week. Think about that. But it's the media using the Jets for clicks as to why the New York Jets are getting so much attention. The Jets aren't sitting here guaranteeing anything. The coaching staff isn't. Rodgers certainly isn't. The buzz is coming from Jet fans being excited, which we have every right to be. We've watched garbage for 13 years. We finally got a chance to dream big about winning a championship. And the buzz comes from the media that wants to capitalize on the fact that anything Jets and Aaron Rodgers gets the most views and clicks, et cetera. John writes in, Jets one plus rushing touchdown every single regular season game, plus 10,000. I mean, they have the backfield to do it. I'd, 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 I'd take a, a small wager on that. Why not? Johnny P with a super chat. Do you think the Jets go phantom injury route with one of their running backs to keep them? Is there a way to attend the Circa event even with staying? live in Las Vegas. If you live in Vegas, I've worked out a deal with Circa where you're allowed to come to the property and come to the party. So absolutely, Johnny. I will see you at the event Saturday night, overhang bar at Circa, 1,000%. Uh, as far as the phantom injury route, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, th I think they could trade Bam or Carter, whoever doesn't make the team. I don't think they'll just outright release them. I think you might be able to get a, a late-round pick for one of them. Hater says, I've been hearing that quietly Whitehead's having a very good camp. Salah says this with being his second year in the system, expect big things plus Tony Adams helps. No question. I've heard very good things, very good things about Whitehead and Adams. And I think you're right, Hater. Tony Adams does help. You know, that's an underrated aspect, right? Jordan Whitehead was signed here to be a difference maker. He's coming from a Bucks team that had just won a Super Bowl. Jordan Whitehead's going to come here, and if he bounces back to the Whitehead we saw in Tampa, that makes your defense better, too. So I'm with you. Great point. Excellent point. All right, two more sign-ups for Patreon. Jason Cohen, shout-out to you for signing up, my friend. Jacob Cortez just signed up. So he's a Cowboys fan, but he's signing up for the Patreon. I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Love getting these... Uh, Thanks so much for your support. Means the world. Means the world. Let's keep rolling here. Um, I want to make sure I didn't miss a super chat. I don't think I have. We'll keep, we'll keep rolling here with your comments. We got open phone lines as well. I got nowhere to be. See, normally I'd be on the radio for another hour right now. Now, I get to do this. Arizona Jets says, hey, Larry, be happy. Now is the time. Larry will never be happy. The Jets could win the Super Bowl 35-31. I promise you, Larry's first comment will be, the Jets defense under Robert Sala, who he despises, allowed too many points. 31 too many. I'm telling you, some of you will never be happy. To those people, I don't have patience for. All right? If you can't be excited about this upcoming season now and you're a Jet fan, why are you a Jet fan? What's the point? What's the point? Could it go wrong? Of course it could go wrong. 
right? But it could go wrong for any team. Joe Burrow almost got hurt. They thought his season was done. So you never know. So live in the moment. Be excited about the fact that this team is all in to try and win. Balloon says if the Jets went 20 and 0, Larry would still complain. Probably. You probably would complain. You're not wrong. Blitzley, crazy to think we have the best wide receiver, defensive tackle, quarterback, cornerback duo, and running back room in Jets history. I can't wait. Uh, look, it's it's not crazy to say all that. I would say in regards to defensive tackle, the sack exchange still earns credit as being the best D-line room in Jet history. Cornerback duo, I mean, look, Sauce and DJ Reed got to do it for more than one year because Ravis and Cromartie certainly did, but it's a conversation. Running back room, it's a conversation, although I wouldn't go there just yet. And receiver-wise, I don't know if they got the best receiver room in team history. That might be a little, little premature. Well, let's not forget, at one point, the New York Jets wide receiver room you know, had Wayne Corbett, Lavernius Coles, and Santana Moss, Braylon Edwards, Jericho Cotri, Santonio Holmes, right? So I won't go that far. You know, Don Maynard and George Sauer. Like, but th this team is certainly talented. There's no doubt. There's a reason why Jet fans are excited. Larry says, I'm just misunderstood. <laughs> Larry, I'd love for you to call in one day, man. Tell us why you can't stand everything about your favorite football team. How was the round, by the way? Did you say hi to Jets forever? Jacob says, I'm also a Jake Aspen fan. I appreciate you, Jacob. Thanks for signing up, my friend. This show alone, I think we've gotten one, two, three, four, five, seven Patreon subscribers. That's awesome. Keep it rolling, people. You guys are awesome. Blitz League says, DJ Reed is greater than Cromartie, and Garrett Wilson's the best wide receiver in Jet history. He's done it for one year, Garrett Wilson. I love him. He's got, the, he's got a chance to be. You're not wrong. But, you know, Don Maynard's in the Hall of Fame. So let's, let's take a breath. Uh, that being said, DJ Reed greater than Cromartie. I actually agree with you. If DJ Reed duplicates what he did last year, I do think he's better than Cromartie. And Cromartie was a very good player. I'll, I, I'll say this again. I think Garrett Wilson's got the opportunity to be the New York Jets' best receiver of all time. That's the type of talent level we're talking about. I mean, for him to put up 1,100 yards last year with Joe Flacco, Mike White, and nine games of Zach Wilson throwing him the ball. An upset. Patreon Discord is the place to be. Amen, Bonesy. Carmelo says, we're not winning anything if Salah don't fix the time management issues and O-line being a turnstile. Can we stop? I can't do the O-line thing again. It's August 17th. The Jets have not had three of their starters out there the last couple of days. What are we doing? Also, Salah's time management issues. Here we go again. Other than the Lions game, which he owned admitted he screwed up. What what other games are we pointing to where Robert Sala has been abysmal with time management issues? Please, I would love to know. No one can think of another example, though. So I, this is not like this is like this pandemic, this huge problem. FM says Sala has a lot to prove. He's been very mediocre. Of course. But you know who also had a lot to prove? Kyle Shanahan going into his third year. And what did he do? He went to the Super Bowl. You know who also had a lot to prove? Zach Taylor with the Bengals. And then what happened? Oh, I know what happened. Joe Burrow showed up, and all of a sudden, Zach Taylor became this great coach, or he benefited from having one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL helping him. You can't win without a quarterback. All right? Sean McVay, he's won a Super Bowl. He went 5-12 and 12 last year because Matt Stafford got hurt and they had a ton of injuries. Zach Taylor with the Bengals was 2-14, 4-11-1 and in his first two years. He won a total of six games. Robert Sala went 4-13 and 7-10 and and his first two years. He won a total of 10 games. And he's had one of the worst quarterback play in the NFL over two years. In fact, he's had the worst statistically. And Sala went from 32nd in defense to top five last year. All right. Bill Belichick's record without Tom Brady and his his head coaching career is 79 and 88. He's missed the playoffs in eight of his 10 years. 
You need coaching. You need players. I mean, you need a quarterback. Pete Carroll, the great Pete Carroll, 7-9 and nine and 7-9 and nine his first two years as an NFL head coach for a total of 14 wins. Once again, the great Kyle Shanahan, who Sala learned under, 6-10 and 10 and 4-12. and 12. Same amount of wins as Robert Sala. In fact, Sala's actually won one more game than Shanahan did through two years. Like, I'm not telling you Robert Sala is this great coach. I think we need to find out what he is. But I think we can now accurately judge who Robert Sala is, what he is as a coach, now that he finally has a quarterback. Neil says, Connor McGovern too light to stone a big nose tackle. Tipman can and also pull and get to the second level much quicker than McGovern. Look, Neil, all you need to know is they brought McGovern back for the veteran minimum. The plan all along is for Joe Tipman, who they could have had. They could have had any center when they were on the clock in the second round. They were all on the board. John Michael Schmitz, who the Giants ended up taking, he was there. Tipman was there. They could have had anyone. Juice Scruggs from Penn State, who the Texans traded up in the second round to get. They could have had any college center, and they wanted Tipman. If you don't think the plan is for Tipman to eventually start, and he might start week one, then Jeff fans, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, let's see. Dave says Freeman McNeil was good. Emerson Boozer would have been the best of not tearing his ACL versus the Chargers. Yet Jet Legends right there, no doubt. 100 percent Super Chad coming in. Here for the memes. Can we just take a moment to realize the Jets won four games in 2021? Salah came here and said we were the equivalent of an expansion team. Look at us now. Yeah. I mean, the Bucs won seven games the year before they got Brady. They got the quarterback that won the Super Bowl. What the Jets are trying to do was just done a couple of years ago. It's not like this is this unprecedented thing that's never happened. Then we saw a year later, Matt Stafford go from one losing franchise to a team that was ready to win, but needed the quarterback to get them over the top, and then he won. Hater says Salah was 11 and 23 in his first two years. Yeah, and Shanahan, I don't I don't have his exact record. Someone do math here. Shanahan, 6 and 10 plus 4 and 12. So Shanahan was what? He was 10 and 22. So very similar. This info says Riggins would have been the best if not traded. Yeah, I, I saw Tim Riggins bust in the Hall of Fame two weeks ago, and I was like, should have been a Jet. Should have been a Jet his whole career. Manny says, Jets can and will be Buffalo twice, Miami twice, and the stupid Pats twice, and hijack the division. I think if the Jets want to win the AFC East, they have to, at a minimum, be 4-2. and two. Four and two minimum. Five and one, perhaps. But they really got to win opening night. That's huge. I think we all understand that. No question about that. All right. With that being said, we'll wrap up the show. I want to thank everyone again who tuned in. We have we have done, let's see. We did two shows on Monday. We did three shows on Tuesday. We did two shows yesterday. We've done two shows today. Tomorrow, we'll have at least one show for you, so be on the lookout for that. I got one of my favorite people in the city of Houston coming on the show, actually making his Jake Asman show debut, our guy Gunny, a.k.a. NYJ Situation Report. He's coming on the channel tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, so be on the lookout for that. We will have a live postgame show immediately following the Bucks game Saturday night, so check back for that. We'll have a show on Sunday. Can't wait. I mean, man, it's a, it's a great time to be a Jeff fan. It really is. So that being said, we'll end it here. Sign up for the Patreon if you haven't already. And reminder, please, Jeff fans, tune in tomorrow. Call in. I'm doing the morning show on ESPN New York. Me and Dan Grassa got you from 6A to 10A Eastern time. You can download the ESPN New York app and listen on the go if you're not in the New York area. Or if you're in the tri-state, 98.7 ESPN is how you can listen in the car 
on your radio. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Jake Asman. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff you already know. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Everyone, have a great rest of their Thursday, and let's go Jets, baby.